Hi, folks. This is Dr. Kat Schreier. Welcome back once again to The Water Show, uh, where we bring you some of the best people in the water space. We're doing some really exciting, sexy things. Um, and uh, today's guest is no exception. Todd Butler is, uh, is the editor of the Texas Water Journal. He is a well-known a dispute resolution expert. He's been a special master uh, for for a, a federal case on endangered species. He's done lots of amazing things, and we're going to talk to him today about water disputes. Todd, uh, welcome, and uh, yeah, welcome to the Water Show. Hey, Kat. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about your history with water disputes. How do you know you're not a you know diplomat or a, you know, a lawyer. So they, you know, how did you get into working on water spews? Well, you know, I started out, um, you know, working for a uh, water management agency and uh, just found that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis going out and working with the public, you know, usually there was a lot of uh, dispute resolution involved. Um, you know, water is a resource which um, everybody shares or, or needs to share some way. And, you know, that could be a difficult thing to do. And I found as my work progressed that, you know, I didn't really have the right kind of training and I need to develop new skills. So I started looking around for opportunities to do that. And, and I started to go out and get that training, which was kind of expensive and required me to travel and do all sorts of other things that, that my employer was not always too excited about. But, um, I, you know, I got the background I needed and then I've used it uh, throughout my career. What, what are the benefits, especially for someone with a technical background in engineering and science and, and you know, environmental sciences, hydrogeologists, hydrologists, um, what are the benefits of having some kind of basic understanding to resolution and how have you use that? Well, you know, um, you know, typically if you're a hydrologist or engineer, you don't really get that kind of training at school and you go to work for, you know, an agency or a district and uh, you think, well, you know, I'm not going to be interacting with the public too much, but you find pretty quickly that there are all sort of all sorts of stakeholder processes and there are public meetings where they're discussing water projects and your expertise is, is needed at those meetings. And uh, you could find pretty quickly that you are interacting with the public regularly. And sometimes it's, you know, in a, in a venue where, um, you know, folks are, are, are pretty concerned about what your agency might be doing or, or not be doing. And yeah. so for that reason, um, you know, it's really beneficial to, to be prepared, to make sure that your, your, your team is prepared. Right, right. Yeah, you know, people talk about you know the global water crisis and you know, the you know, cop you know the climate disputes and 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 uh, uh, you know the old Kennedy quote about you know people with Nobel Peace Prize you know the, if you win a Nobel Prize for water you get science and peace prizes and, and but people don't usually think about. It what's happening at the local level. I mean, when you're dealing with water, you're dealing with lots of livelihoods. So, um, you know, this is, this is really something that comes up over and over again. And, you know, and they can get really heated, very emotional. Right. Yeah, you know, nobody cares about water, but if it has to do with your life, with your livelihood, with your community, with the farming community, or with lead in the water, or, you know, lead, lead in the pipes or whatever, I mean, right. you know, that, that, uh, even the technical experts are often involved in those discussions, right? Right. The uh, the emotions around a walk around water are unique in many ways, and um, like you said, you know, people uh, become quite concerned, maybe fearful of what might be happening, and it's important, you know, to know how to work with them because you know what we're trying to do here is keep uh, small disagreements from becoming larger disputes or conflicts. And, you know, if you look at how those big water conflicts um, develop, they usually start off from something small that's not handled well. And, um, you know, we're thinking about, you know, the future as the climate is changing and, you know, water supplies are gonna be less and less reliable. And we're gonna be in situations where um, you know, the public is 
is being told to cut back on the water use or water users are being um, diverted from one sector of the economy to another or one area of a state to another, you know, whatever it is. Don't you know, tell me a, how to use my water. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, that's all a recipe for, for conflict. And, and, uh, and, you know, it's a good idea to be ready for it and to make sure that your, your folks are ready for it. Yeah. Well, so what are some of the biggest challenges that uh, a water district or, or staff in a water district that, that they want to get better at student resolution, why might they not be getting that training? What are the challenges associated with getting trained to, to be able to understand how to deal with those sorts of situations? Sure. Well, for me, uh, when I realized that I needed um, a certain skill set that I didn't have, and I went out and found out about where that training was offered and by whom, it, re it required, you know, a you know, pretty fair amount of money and travel. And so I would have to fly up to DC or to Denver or, or to Seattle or someplace. And I'd be there for three or four days, which meant, you know, rental car and hotel and meals, plus the, the cost of the program, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was just a, a considerable expense. And so not to mention, you know, your employees are going to be away from their job for several days, potentially. And so, so that was really the big challenge that, that, that I encountered, you know, the cost and also the amount of time and uh, the, you know, the fact that your employer who might really be relying on you has to, you know, find a way for you to let you go uh, and you know, get that training and then come back. And so, you know, those are all kind of the big challenges that I encountered. Well, so, um, yeah, and, and especially with these smaller uh, utilities, people are wearing a lot of hats. You know, right. they trying to make sure that the water is running every day, that, that uh, you know, flood, we're protected from floods and droughts every day, that, you know, this is this is not something you just kind of, oh, you think I'm going to take some time on. So what are some of the ways that um, of overcoming those challenges and and you know I think this this ties into what you uh, you were working on with uh, with our program last spring. That's right. That's right. So you know there is, there are still opportunities, of course, to I mean when we're not in a pandemic, right? Um, to go and get training uh, and you know pay a larger fee and you know be gone for several days, um, and you can also you know find videos that you can watch. I mean, you know, I, I'm not sure those are really very effective. Um, and the other alternative is a lot of money. And so what I've been focusing on is, um, you know, tailoring those trainings to the, the needs of the various organizations and then going there and providing it to their employees. Um, so, you know, more than one person can get the training at, at one time and that, and that they don't have to travel to do so. Um, but, you know, during the pandemic, you know, we do it, um, you know, over the internet like this in an in interactive fashion, as opposed to, you know, just watching a, a uh, you know, a video of somebody talking about these issues. So those are kind of the, the two, um, you know, uh, opportunities right now. Fantastic. And, and so um, we did have a chance to work with you with, with uh, the Virtual Water Education Lab. Um, what were some of the ideas that came up there in terms of how you might need, meet the needs of, you know, even, even you know, really small groups that, that can't bring in someone to train the whole staff on, on site? Um, how might you be able to, to get this sort of training out to a larger audience? Well, to get out to a larger audience, um, you know, the, you, you can, um, you know, schedule a program and get people signed up to do it virtually. Um, but one of the things I learned um, through the program uh, that you, uh, you know, taught this last spring was the importance of, you know, talking to the organizations about what their needs really are, and then, you know, tailoring the program around that instead of just, you know, here's my, you know, generic, um, you know, water dispute resolution program that I'm going to put you through. Uh, but to really 
you know, look at what are their needs and to make sure that, you know, what I'm doing is responding to this, that specific client's needs. Great. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the advantages that we've seen with doing it as a live program is, you know, there is an element of here are the steps and we're going to walk you through you know, one week. So it's not overwhelming, but, but then most of the time is, is um, actually interactive and people in class so that you're tailoring the coaching to each individual. And then they're also hearing from each other as well. Like uh, you, um, you, you had a chance to work with some of the other um some of the other folks who were taking the the program at the same time last spring, right? I did. I did. And, you know, everybody had a a different problem they were trying to, uh, you know, resolve and and figure out a a better approach to. Yeah. 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 Was it helpful to have other people that you could kind of compare notes with and just kind of see how they were going through the process? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, there, there are things that are, I think, common to what everybody, you know, can figure out is necessary, but, but that, but there are other elements in addition to that, that um, you may not think of. And I, you know, I've certainly found that when I had the opportunity to get feedback from the other participants, um, you know, I learned about a few things that, hey, would really make, you know, my, um, you know, you know, working with other folks, uh, are the clients much more effective? Nice. Well, fantastic. Well, um, we actually have a, a page. I used to, so right now you're getting ready to um, provide some opportunities for people to actually connect with you if you if if they want to learn more about this or um, or possibly uh, work with you on a program. Uh, let's see if I can find that up here. Yeah. So we're gonna. Um, be doing some interviews uh, and to find out, you know, what uh, people are really interested in in a program that we would do in 2022. Um, and so, you know, here is the page where they can sign up um, for the the interview to discuss their needs and and find out a little bit about what they're doing. Um, you know, they also um, go to waterdisputes.org. Um, and find out more information about uh, the kinds of opportunities that I can help out with. But um, but those are right now the two best ways to, to get a hold of me, other than maybe LinkedIn. Just put my name in LinkedIn and it'll pop up. But yeah, absolutely. So so definitely, folks, you know, if you've got disputes and if you're working with water, you're dealing with these disputes at some point. Um, you know, Todd is a tremendous resource. He's he's got so much knowledge. It's really applicable uh, to these. And so go ahead and check him out at, at uh, it's waterdisputes dot. Did you say dot com or, or dot dot org? Waterdisputes.org. Dot org. Um, and uh, and of course you can also go to um, watercitizen.org slash water disputes if you'd like to be part of uh, a little research survey that, that Todd's doing where you know he can he can walk you through the you know the challenges your frustrations the things that you're dealing with in water disputes and and uh, and how um, you know what might be a, a good solution for you to to get that training in house so you've got your team ready to go in 2022 for you know the pandemic doesn't stop disputes from going on they're still going <laughs> right right yeah. so um well fantastic folks thank you so much for joining us again here at the water show todd Butler, thank you so much for joining us today thanks kat great to see you always good talking with you as well all right and uh we'll see you guys again at the water show